You know, it's pretty common for microphones to clone the <laughs> Shure SM7B style. It's a popular microphone, it's a standard broadcast microphone, you know, physical format and layout. But it's rare I get a microphone that looks directly like an Electrovoice RE20 or RE320 clone. And that's kind of cool. I'm Impulse Fox, the stream professor, and today we're looking at a microphone from a new audio company, or at least a sort of new audio company. 512 Audio is a branch off of the company Warm Audio, which was only started in like 2011, but they're focused on more content creator and streaming focused products rather than their more studio focused stuff in the Warm Audio brand. So I believe it's a sub brand branched off of Warm Audio. This is their 512 Limelight. They released two microphones at the same time back in August. Yes, I'm just now getting around to it. We have a lot going on in the studio. I got I got to catch up. This is a $200 dynamic broadcast microphone. They also released a $200 large diaphragm condenser microphone, which I'll probably record right after this. I was less impressed with it, at least initially. Uh, and they also released an $80 mic arm that I will compare later when I review Rode's new microphone arm and compare to. You can see here, if I put it up next to the Electrovoice RE320 and the Rode Pod mic, which of course just looks like the front of the RE20 or RE320 just kind of chopped off. Very similar designs here that we don't see all that often. So while the design itself may not matter a whole lot personally, I'm more of a sound quality focused person, I think it's kind of neat regardless. The one difference you will note, however, if you ever hold one, is it is incredibly light, like concerningly light. I, I believe I unboxed this on stream. I have no idea if I saw the clip. I'll throw it in here if I do. But compared to any of the Electro Voice mics or even the Rode Pod mic, which is a pretty chunky, heavy dude, this mic weighs nothing. It feels like a toy, and that's really concerning. I, I really worry about what they're not including on the inside that all of these other microphones are. And one of the things might actually be a shock mount because the handling noise on this microphone is abysmal. Since we're talking about the physical build, I guess I'll go ahead and mention that, but like... It sounds really bad. And based on some of the responses from the Q9U and a couple microphones I reviewed earlier this year, that might be a complete deal breaker for you. I don't currently know of any full shock mount options available for the microphone just yet, uh, but it is mostly the same diameter as most of these other mics, so if you have a universal one, it will probably fit. They do have a little bit of shock absorption in the actual mount that you use here, but it's it's not really enough. Physically, of course, it's a long black cylinder. It has the venting on the side to help with re you know rejecting all of your ambient and background sounds, and it also has a switch on the bottom for a high pass switch. Now. The sound of this microphone, on top of the on top of the looks being completely different, the sound of this microphone is likely to be much more different than what you're expecting. It is a dynamic microphone, which means it's going to be better at rejecting background and ambient sound compared to condenser microphones, better for desktop streaming situations where you have keyboards, mice, controllers, reflections off of your desk and monitor bouncing back into the microphone. It will handle that better. But it's tuned very weirdly. So it's a hypercardioid mic, which means it's supposed to only pick up right here and start to color your voice once you get off to the sides and things like that. You can kind of judge for yourself. Specs-wise, though, we're looking at a frequency range. They're calling it a frequency range rather than a frequency response. So take that with what you will. Of 50 hertz to 15 kilohertz. And that might stand out because most of the mics I review carry over from like 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So we're losing 5 kilohertz at the top end, and we're losing upwards of 30, uh, 30 hertz rather, at the low end, which means you're already having a significant bass roll-off just built into the microphone. It comes with a high-pass filter, which rolls off starting at 100 hertz at 12 decibels per octave, which is a, at least for my voice, for my audio, I know we go back and forth, you and me in the comment section, we go back and forth on this all the time. I listen on, you know, my... Reference kind of flatter headphones, my PreSonus Aris studio monitors, and then I go and listen on like my iPhone. And I think my typical post processing sounds pretty good, which involves a slight boost in the 150 hertz range to give me some of that warmth back that a lot of microphones lack. Like lack, lack is the word. And then I start cutting at 250 hertz because I get some of that muddy boominess. And then I roll off starting at like 48 kilohertz ish. So theoretically, the 50 hertz range. Not too huge of a deal, even if it's usually naturally picked up, but to start cutting off with the high pass filter at 100 hertz feels like a lot, especially because, in my opinion, this microphone doesn't sound great. Now, I already posted some of the samples of this in my Earthworks Ethos review, and a couple of you all actually said it stood out as sounding really impressive for 200 bucks, which I was surprised by. Glad to be surprised by it. 
I find it sounds a little hollow with my voice. It has that weird, almost resemblant of the handling noise. It almost has that, like, it, it sounds like it's a smaller, like, headset mic in a echo chamber almost. It's really weird. That's not accurate at all. I, I, I go back and forth with these audio descriptions all the time. It, it sounds hollow. It sounds like there's emphasis in some weird frequencies that I really don't like. So I'm going to have some fun and a little bit playing with the post-processing, and you can hear the results of that in a little bit. But it's a very different noise profile compared to most of the dynamic broadcast microphones out of there. And from what I can tell, that was kind of designed to be that way. They're designed to pick up, uh, produce smooth, crystal clear audio. So it's designed to cut out the, the rumble and stuff that you might encounter in desktop streaming scenarios it's supposed to be crystal clear and cut across all of your other audio which is where that higher end kind of focus kind of comes out you can decide for yourself if you like it we're going to roll some comparisons to some similarly priced microphones so we got the Rode Procaster we got the Samson Q2U just because I'm always throwing that in there as another dynamic option we've got the Rode pod mic and the AT2040 and then I'll throw in one of my electro voice mics probably the RE320 because it's the cheaper of them to see what you're kind of getting with the upgrade I'm going to say for my voice, everyone's voices are different. You can kind of gauge the sound characteristics for yourself. I'm going to say for my voice, I prefer the Q2U over this one. But I'm going to roll the samples and let you decide. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky. Seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone. Nine for the mortal men doomed to die. One for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. Three rings for the Oven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. Three rings for the Oven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. Talking while typing on box royale switches. Talking while typing. Talk, talk, talk. Click, 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 click. Talking while typing. Talking while typing on box royale switches. Talking while clipping, clicking and typing. Talking while clicking. Tippity tap, tip, tap, tap. Talking while typing. Talking while typing on box royale switches. Talking while clicking. Clicking and clacking. Clicky, click, clack, clack. And white noise test. Talking while typing. Talking while typing. Tippity tip, tip, tap, tap, tap. Clicky click 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 click. click. Tippity tip tip tap tip tip typing while talking. Click click click. Tippity tip tip tap. Talking while typing. Talking while typing. Tippity tip tap tap. And click 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 click. Capture cards are great, but they won't make you a popular streamer, nor help you turn streaming into a business. I was just talking in a recent podcast about how I'm frustrated that so much of the content creator journey involves just relearning or reteaching things that most of us have gone through, with no real way of passing that along. The awesome people behind Streamer Square are here to change all of that with the launch of SolarStream, a new educational hub focused on all things streaming. SolarStream features 30 courses with more on the way, covering topics of all levels, from just getting started with streaming up to the cool important stuff like analytics, stream growth, and even taxes and other business objectives. If you're serious about streaming as a career or even a side job, or you just want to be the best you can be at it, don't get caught without a plan or a strategy. Sign up for SolarStream with the link in the video description and use the code EPOS for 10% off your first purchase. I'm also going to go ahead and roll this with some post processing. I haven't actually figured out what I'm doing with it yet, so I will show the settings on screen and hopefully remember to do so this time because I forgot to with the ethos. Uh, and you can see that on screen. By the way, if you liked in the comparisons, me showing the like spectral frequency graph, that was actually a request from a viewer who wanted a more visual representation of the sound differences. I don't know if that's useful to you, if you even know what you're looking at, but if you find it useful, let me know. And yeah, it's 200 bucks. It's competitive in the dynamic broadcast microphone space. A lot of people are looking at microphones in that price point. 
I don't know if it's worth it. The handling noise is awful to me. I can't believe it's like that at all. I don't I don't understand. It's terrible, especially for something built for streamers. Like here, I'm I'm gonna start like bumping my desk and stuff. Obviously, I'm on an arm, but it's still clamped to the desk. So if I like start setting stuff around, you're probably getting a lot of that rumble into the mic, even with the little rubber fitting. I don't I don't know. I it's a lot. I just realized we haven't done a comparison with the bass roll-off switch. I did a lot of compare complaining about it. Let's see how it actually sounds. This is a microphone sample with the bass roll-off or the, the high-pass filter engaged on the microphone, which again starts cutting around 100 hertz. This is a microphone test. This is a microphone test with the bass roll-off or high-pass switch disabled set to the flat profile. This is a microphone test. I think it's cool that we're getting different options at the various price points. I just reviewed a freaking $700 microphone and now we're reviewing a $200 microphone. I've just reviewed $100 microphones. Like I like that we're getting competition in these spaces and I think that can hopefully breed some innovation in the fact that this specific microphone company is making much different uh, frequency choices than a lot of the other microphones it says that they have something to potentially offer if you like their secret sauce or whatever. A good reason they might be doing this with the higher frequencies is especially for already existing, you know, higher voices than mine that sit in the higher registers or the headspace, or if you're post-processing it in a way that emphasizes those frequencies, you would actually have a lot easier time getting your voice to cut over gameplay sounds, which is a, often a lot of lower boomy rumbles, cutting across background music, things like that. That used to be a common practice in some formats. I hit the microphone again. <laughs> in some formats to, you know, focus on the higher ends to more clearly cut across background tracks. Uh, and whereas your lower, muddier kind of vocals would not necessarily do that. Whether that's the decision you think was the right choice or not, that's up to you. I do wonder when we reach the point of where we have enough microphones and we kind of need things to just lean on being stable and maybe we come up with something else to offer than just tweaking microphones over and over, especially when many of the long running staples are microphones that have been around for 50 or 100 years. I don't really know what the answer is in that case and that's not necessarily a fair conversation to pose specifically against Limelight, so I'm, or 512 audio really, so I'm, I'm going to leave it at that. But. Here's the samples for you. I do hope you enjoyed. Product links will be in the description below as always if you want to check it out for yourself. If you're interested, go check out this other video on the audio interface I'm using these days in, in lieu of the GoXLR. Join us on Discord, discord.gg slash Check out our sponsor and remember, be kind, rewind.